Welcome to Women of Wisdom, Let's Talk. I am the host of Women of Wisdom. My name is Janetta Tony, and what we do is encourage, empower, and educate, um, transforming lives, basically. Um, today, I have a guest today, Montana, and Montana is the CEO of Bly. Hey, everybody. And she is also a mother, a grandmother, and she's really the epitome of women of wisdom. Oh, Now that shoot. I think of that, she is the epitome of women of wisdom because she has birthed so many nonprofit organizations oh, yeah. and businesses as well. Montana, welcome to Women of Wisdom. I'm Let's happy, talk. happy to be here. Woo -woo. <laughs> All the black people out there. <laughs> oh, it's just an honor and a privilege to have you here today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'd like to be here. Love oh, to be here. Oh, you're welcome. So, you know, I have one basic question. Okay. Um, I guess we all do. The audience do. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're an entrepreneur. Yes, yes. And the first question I would like to ask you is how was that birth? What made you want to become an a entrepreneur? What uh, gave you oh, that wow. vision? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Okay, the honest truth. Yes. Um, being an entrepreneur when I was younger, I did not want to be an entrepreneur. What? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was married, uh, and I just wanted to, you know, have my husband take care of me. I ain't want to okay. work. Like, listen, I, I was one of those ones, like, I had a job, but I ain't need no job because I got a husband to this, take care okay. of me. And he going to take care of well, This is my play money, right? Okay. So, anyway, we got divorced. Um, we're still good friends. Mm -hmm. We got divorced. And pretty much I had to, you know, do on my own. So, I was working, you know, some pretty good jobs. And mm -hmm. I was finding myself, I was getting fired every two years. Like, every mm -hmm. two years, like, clockwork wow. anniversary time, I would get, you know, fired. So I will, I will prepare for that. I said, oh, I got one more year here, mm -hmm. and they're going to fire me. So sure enough, it was one more year, and I was booted out. So I had, like, lots of ideas okay. and lots of uh, – I was very creative as a young child. Mm -hmm. I would create things and probably, like, I would duplicate some things that people would do. Like, my teachers would create a bulletin board. Okay. And I would look at the bulletin board. I said, I can do that better than what they did. And I would go home, and I would create my own bulletin board. So they had, like, fall, spring, and summer. Mm -hmm. And I would create it, like, really fall, spring, and summer. I had real stuff on there. Stuff be falling down. It would be, like, LED lights on there before LED even came oh, out. Oh, wow. Um, and I was like, uh. And after I finished the project, I was like, okay, something. I'm going to something new. Mm -hmm. So um, when I became an entrepreneur, um, I like to talk. And I, I found myself, like, doing, like, motivational speaking. Okay. Okay. And it was mixed in with educational things as far as what I I knew, what I grew up on, or what I was uh, trained or educated to do. Okay. And pretty much I talked all I took all my um my 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 pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I took everything that I learned, I took everything that um, you know, all my experiences and I just bottled them up into becoming my own entrepreneur. Okay. And I went to school, went to college. Um, I didn't get a degree, so okay. I don't have that, you guys. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, but I'm not knocking whoever got degrees. Right. Yay to you. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't for me. Okay. okay. <laughs> so um, everybody has a gift, and pretty much my gift was pushing out, like, this is your gift. This is your gift. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be in front of people. I just already rather have other people do it for mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. and then I just you know guide and tell everybody what to do right right um but I found myself like getting pushed into a leadership role into a position um that you know pretty much I was like that I didn't want so mm -hmm. God put me in that position right. that you don't want so you gotta be careful when you ask God that's right what you want and then he give it to you and be like wait a minute this ain't I wanted this this way I wanted this <laughs> this way Lord you ain't looking at you know my my prayer requests and I did it like step by step in the guidelines. So when that came, um, I had to take, you know, responsibility mm -hmm. to do that, whether it flopped mm -hmm. or whether it was successful, whether I got some love some side to head or whether, mm -hmm. you know, whatever came about the business, it was a learning experience. OK. okay. Um, started blot in 2017. Okay. Um, yeah, I was by myself. And I was trying to get, like, me and my sister to do it together. Mm -hmm. But she had her own mission and vision that she was mm -hmm. trying to do. So we kind of, like, parted ways. And she did her thing. I did mine. 
Um, I teamed up with high school, um, high school, you know, high school was it colleague of mm-hmm. mine back mm-hmm. in Collinwood, mm-hmm. and he lived in the neighborhood. And his, you know, his family and stuff lived on my street. Mm-hmm. And I teamed up. I said, "Hey, are you still do you know motivational speaking or speaking?" He was like, "Yeah, I do that." So I said, "Well, listen, I'm getting ready to put together a um, a motivational speaking business, I think, mm-hmm. and I want you to come and speak for me." He's like, "No problem. I would love to come speak." Okay. I was like, "All right." So we met at my house. Uh, it was me and another lady, and him, and we was formatting it, getting it together. I mean, it was plush. It was it was food. I mean, this is our first event, and it was I dressed up, had my hair done, excited. Mm-hmm. excited. <laughs> Now, you guys, listen very closely what happened. <laughs> uh, what happened was um, I had the kids put the tables up, mm-hmm. and they was putting tablecloths on and everything. I had the speakers mm-hmm. show up early, and nobody showed up to the event. Nobody. nobody. It was crickets. So, you know, I had my haters was in the back saying, oh, look at this, flopping already. She don't know what yeah, she's doing. Know, and and I heard a voice say, uh, you know, the show must go on, mm-hmm. pretty much. The show must go on. Mm. Get your first speaker up. And I'm like, but ain't nobody here. Except for these kids that's putting up the tables and stuff. Right. Nobody's here. So I got my first speaker up. I sat in the front because I didn't want anybody to see my face. Because mm-hmm. I was upset. Like, I can't believe it. When I say we had food, we had greens, macaroni and cheese, chicken, baked chicken. So we food. Had, <laughs> right. Because I thought it was going to be one of them big events. And it mm-hmm. wasn't. But it was a learning experience. And a lot of, of people... Course will experience that and they'll quit. They will quit. Um, I did and I pushed forward and my motivational speaker came up and she was an evangelist Mm -hmm. and she came up and she started talking about business and how it attaches to the Bible. Mm -hmm. When she start, um, when she starts speaking, the kids, you know, in the back, they were on their phones and playing Mm -hmm. and, you know, hitting each other. They stopped Mm -hmm. and they started listening to her because she was kind of like they age. Yeah. And she started speaking, and it was like, bam, I'm sitting in the front like, oh, my God. I was like, I want to be an entrepreneur, too. <laughs> so then my second speaker came up. He started doing the financial piece of how to make money mm-hmm. as an entrepreneur. So the kids put their phones down. They really was paying attention. And then I was like, okay. And I'm seeing it be birthed okay. in front of my own yes. eyes. Yes. Because even though it was a flop, I'm looking at the birth yes. of this baby being birthed yes. and what we can do. So the, my next speaker, she came in and she gave her testimony of how she's a full fledged entrepreneur mm-hmm. and how she makes bread. Okay. Um. So after all my speakers was up, you know, I was closing it out, and then you know, some of my one of my speakers that didn't want to speak because it was a flop. Now they want to talk, so they <laughs> got up there. So well, let me say some. I said I thought you was sick. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel a little bit better. I'm just gonna just say a few words. Couldn't get them off the microphone. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so. You know, in my mind, I said, well, the kids learned something valuable that day. And I said, well, let me push forward with it again. So pretty much I was taken in consideration. Mm -hmm. It was my idea, my plan, and that's why I was flopping. Mm -hmm. So the next event, same thing. I had maybe 10 people show up. It flopped. God was bringing you out. He's bringing you out. That's right. You finna walk in your gift. And I was like, no, (laughs) I ain't walking. I'm not. Look, I told you, Lord, I want to be on this side of the fence. I don't want to be over here because now I'm responsible mm-hmm. for, you know, like you said, business being yeah, birthed. And I yeah. didn't want that. Um, and then after the second flop, I was like, well, let me find somebody to teach this thing. Because evidently, if we teach it and that people understand uh, their businesses going forward, then they have a better way of doing things instead mm-hmm. of just um, copying and pasting things and copying off their friends and putting business together. They have mm-hmm. no idea what they're mm-hmm. doing. They're making money, but at the end, they're going to lose it all because the IRS might take um, money. I've had people come to me and say, the IRS took everything. Okay. All the money I made, they came and got it. They took it out the bank account. They charged me. They did this and this and that. Because they didn't know how to balance their money. Right. Okay. And they was they was <clears throat> believing that it was their money. Okay. Like, okay. I'm going to go on this money and just this going to be my money and okay. I'm going to use it by a car house. And not budgeting and not doing it the right way. Um, so when I um, had a lady, she came in and started teaching it. Mm-hmm. Um, she was excellent. She was doing a very good job. Um, she's very knowledgeable about what she knew. and But what happened was it just didn't work out. Okay. It didn't work out because my vision or the vision that was um, given to me, mm-hmm. it wasn't the same as what she was doing. Mm-hmm. And she had to, like, you know, leave. 
Okay. So I was trying to hand it to another lady. I was like, listen, you can do this because you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can, you know, you, IRS taught you everything you need to know. So she um, didn't even make it to the class. She was like, well, I, I'm on my own mission. I got my own vision. And I was like, okay, now what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. So then when I stepped into the role. Set up. A guy yeah, set, set up. me up. <laughs> so did. He set me up. Um, when I stepped into the role, I had about 15 students. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what am, am I going to do with this? So I started teaching according to what the IRS guidelines mm -hmm. and rules was. And what I knew about, you know, um, business and entrepreneurship and things like that. Um, so it was a success. Mm -hmm. The next class um, was bigger. Okay. It was about, I think it was about 30 people. So we had to break it up into two days. Okay. So it was, we had Sunday and Mondays. And then next thing you know, it just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we outgrew the library. Mm -hmm. and we had to get our own place. So that's where you started at. You initially started teaching at the library. At the library, yes. Okay. And that was for free. No, That was for free. Wow. Yep. Okay. Um, now, the, the thing about God, I didn't have any money, mm -hmm. like none. And the, the payments that people were paying for the program was like $35, $30 or $35. And pretty much I had um, a couple of people say, I'm going to sponsor. I believe in what you're doing. I'm going to sponsor you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what, is what do you mean you're going to sponsor? Mm -hmm. He said, we're going to pay you every month to get this up and running. And every, they, didn't know me from, they, didn't, uh, they didn't know me from Adam every month, like clockwork. They came wow. with the money every month. And I was like, mm -hmm. I guess I'm supposed to be doing this thing because it would go from the money would go in my hand. I give it to where I, it need to go. And then it was like, okay, you, need to, you got 30 days from the time we get the money to get something up and running. And every right. 30 days, I will do something more, every 30 days. So that was the catalyst to keep pushing mm -hmm. you. And then when um, we got our place, uh, I think I had $500. That was it. And then when I got into the parking lot, they were there to meet me and say, here's your money for her. I'm like, oh, shoot, what I supposed to? Wow. Yeah. And it's like, if you pay us back, it's good. If you don't. We need this up and running. So he opened up doors for you. He right. Every way. It's he like opened he up doors. Leading you. Yeah, it's somewhere I didn't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like that, I right. think. It's always like that. So a lot of people, I say that because a lot of people say, um, you know, I'm waiting on God. I yeah. got to pray about yeah. it first. And I'm saying, well, God has already opened up the door. And you don't want to go in it. Like, you I don't want to go. Act. Right. I don't want to go in it either. Mm -hmm. That's not the door I said I wanted. I said I wanted that door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, you're waiting on God, and then you have to have faith and believe yes. when you do it. Yes. Because I'm telling yes. you, it's like, you know, he. when I say open up doors, it's like this is not my business mm -hmm. because everything in here, I can walk away from it because mm -hmm. everybody donated it. Mm -hmm. Like, some mm -hmm. of the things were donated. Some mm -hmm. things were purchased through the business. But... I say about ninety percent of the stuff in here was given, and it was amazing because I never That's seen that before. Um, like you got a brand new copier; it was delivered off the truck. You got chairs and tables being brought, and you got brand new um, tables that we had when we first came in from Home Depot. Which thank you. Um, what's the play? The tire place down the street is um, that donated it was um, dang, I want to say. No, that's not the name. It was um, Smallick. Okay. So okay. I thank you, Smallick, if you're watching, wow. for donating all the tables to Blot. Um, and then it was some more, oh, I, I can't remember the, the business, but they have business furniture. Mm -hmm. They donated mm -hmm. um, the conference tables, all the chairs, the garbage cans, the blackboards, everything we needed wow. for a tax write-off. So all you had to do was start walking, just That's walking it. in your bus, right. and then God was just opening up every door before you. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I want to walk in this door. Because, right. you know, right. you have to, with responsibility, you have to, you know, He's. it says he knows what you're able to, mm -hmm. you know, um, endure. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, misquoted a lot. I think I probably misquoted it too, but mm -hmm. pretty much if you read it. Yeah. Um, and everything or every situation, every mountain we had to tangle, I could handle it. Like, mm -hmm. it was easy for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really hard, but a lot of people that come into business here, mm -hmm. oh, my God, this is so hard, Montana. You make it sound so easy. And to get the business up and get the money and do this, I'm like, and I'm looking like, yeah, it wasn't hard for me because God was backing it. Wow. Like, some things was, but it's like, okay, I ain't going to worry about it. God going to mm -hmm. hash Open it out. Right. right, right, 
That's right. And then I just got to go and just, okay, we're going to do this, 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 let's move forward. And then if it's not, God going to say, okay, stop it. Mm-hmm. It's going to stop it in its tracks and it's going to go a different route. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's how it all got started. Okay. So did you go through any adversities in the meantime while you're going through all this? There were things happening in your life that was oh, to my you off? Le- yes. A whole lot. You want to hear about it? Yes. People watching? Yes, we do. <laughs> all right. Let me see. Um, I had um, family members mm-hmm. that were trying to knock it like, oh, you know, this ain't, you know, this ain't what it is. And she, you know, she shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, this is a scam and, you know, all mm-hmm. the, it's just, mm-hmm. and it was family, mm-hmm. you know, wow. jealous family. And you would think your family like, oh, do yeah. it, go right away. Just, we cheerleading, you know, it was the strangers that was cheerleading me instead of my family. Oh, wow. Yeah, they wanted to sit back and watch first. And now they say, okay, well, shoot, this has been going on. Now my family is like, okay, we supporting. Okay. Yeah, we okay. support what you're doing. But at first it's like, eh, I don't know about this, you know, because I guess when families see you, they're not used to seeing you mm-hmm. in a different uh, leadership role. You know, it makes me think about a verse that said a prophet is not honored in their own home. And sometimes when mm-hmm. your family looking at you like, oh, that's my sister. That's yeah, my, oh, that's pretty much it. going to do this. But other people looking at you and people that see, that can see spiritually right. be like, okay. Yep. And that's how I was. Yeah, okay. And it's amazing how it's written in the book, but you, when you experience for yourself, you're like, oh, this is what it's talking about. Right, right. So you just got to keep pushing forward. There's a lot of things that um, have you want to give up sometimes. Mm-hmm. And usually some people give up because um, it, ain't, it don't go the way they think it should go or the way they think it's supposed to go. Okay. Instead okay. of letting it go and letting it flow like it's supposed to, how God wanted it to flow. Mm-hmm. Because if you have a gift and you have a mission – um, you have, you know, a desire. Sometimes God uses it, but it's not all in your favor. Mm-hmm. Like this is how, this is my business. I want my business to be like this. Mm-hmm. Well, then that's your business then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is going to go according to what you mm-hmm. want it to go. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, well, this is what I think I want to do. God, work it out. Yeah. And then he said, well, this is really what I want you to do. Right. Having that faith. That's yeah. it. Having that faith. Walking in what God has called you to walk into. Yes. Yep. Okay, now I know you have birthed <laughs> so many businesses and nonprofit organizations. How does that make you feel? No one. Uh man, I, I um I really didn't notice it until somebody told had to really sit down and you know what you have done? I was like Yeah. I was just like I never counted. You know, it was just a day-to-day thing, let me do this, let's get this class done, let's get these businesses up and going, let these people have their non-profit, for-profit businesses. But, yeah, I, I never, like, say, oh, dang, I done birthed Mm-mm, this and that. Humility. That's humility. So, right, yeah. so I'm not taking credit for it because, uh-huh. like I said, it wasn't my it wasn't my, my, my mission, it wasn't my vision, it wasn't my, my you know, whatever. Um, when I did it, like I said, it was basically God. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what God is trying to do. I don't know what the purpose is. I don't because I was like, okay, this is what I want. Mm-hmm. I want God to bless me doing this, this, and this. And like I said, I didn't come in like that. I was mm-hmm. like, well, let me just do it and see what happened. Like you put on the Spider-Man suit. Mm-hmm. Let me just put it on. I didn't ask for it, but let me just walk in and see what happened. So, yeah, it's it a lot of ups and downs, roller coasters and mountains. But when you get up one mountain, guess what? A bigger mountain come because you're – you're growing. Mm-hmm. You're, um, you know, you climbing different levels, and you when you climb different levels, you meet different problems. Okay. And usually, people say different demons, but it's different problems, and then you just get through that mountain, and then you know go through it. Okay. Um, the okay. key about um, you know, walking in faith is you have to speak it. Okay. Um, you can you don't have to speak it out loud. Sometimes you can speak it in your spirit, mm-hmm. and just and just put it in your head, and just you have to. Do something. It can't mm-hmm. just sit there. You, mm-hmm. If you do something, then it's going to manifest. That's right. That's and it can right. be just as little as, like, making a phone call. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. something, a drop, you know, fall in your lap. Mm-hmm. But like, if you, right? If you a don't domino have, effect. Yeah. Much. If you don't believe in it, like, you can say it all day long. But if your spirit don't believe in it, then you're wasting your time. Wow. Okay. Now, I noticed that you offer a lot of courses. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us about those, please? Okay. All right. You got your questions. Let me me see that book. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So the courses we offer, of course, is the um, 501c3, Mm -hmm. the nonprofit course, and then the for-profit. So we kind of teach those together because we're trying to get it to make sense for a lot of people when they're starting businesses. They either start an LLC 
Okay. Or they try to start a nonprofit and then they don't understand once they get it what to do with it after it's been birthed. So what's the difference between an LLC and a nonprofit? Uh, one is for profit and okay. one is not. One okay. is you don't make a profit. Okay. But so the LLC pretty much stands for. Well, the LLC is limited liability. Okay. Okay. Um, company and p- the reason why people pick LLCs because you know somebody else got it. Like you got okay. an LLC, your business is successful. I'm gonna start an LLC, not even knowing what really an LLC is capable of doing. Okay. Like they don't know the background history of an LLC. Um, nonprofits, they start nonprofits because um, they see maybe one of their friends made a lot of money with a nonprofit, mm-hmm. and they want to start a nonprofit too, not understanding. Um, the different things that the nonprofit carry mm-hmm. and the nonprofit can hold. Mm-hmm. Um, so we kind of like break those two down to them. So you can have an LLC or an INC. Okay. You can have a trust or a C corporation or S corporation. Okay. So we teach that in class so they can understand if you go this way, because a lot of people come with their family. So okay. they might want to be an S corporation. I mean, mm-hmm. a C corporation. Mm-hmm. A lot of people want to be an S corporation because they're doing things to, for the community. They're doing things like, um, like a barbershop. Okay. And they have customers coming in. Okay. And they might have contractors, you know, barbers. So back then, I think they would hire the barbers, but now all barbers have their own manager's license and things like that. So they're their own contractor. Okay. So my thing is, if you're doing that, it's like you're hiring another contractor to come cut hair. Okay. Um, So if they mess that person's hair up, okay, now you're liable because you hired this contractor. So we kind of like break those steps down so they can understand, Mm -hmm. like back in the days, it's not like it is today. Right. Because everybody is now can get sued. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you are a contract, I'm a contract, and I hire you, and you do something stupid, I'm going to get sued. Okay. So you but then I can turn way. around and sue you. Okay. <laughs> so that's how it's supposed to be. Okay. Just to protect yourself and, and say, okay, well, you messed up. I got to take full liability mm-hmm. of what you did. Mm-hmm. And it ain't that. it's not like that no more. That's why everybody has to have insurance, you guys. Um, insurance is very important. We break insurance down to people that don't understand what's the purpose of insurance. Okay. Because they think insurance is just one way, but there's many ways that you can use your insurance coverage for. So every business should have insurance. Yes. How about the nonprofit? Yes. Should they have insurance as Definitely, well? definitely um, the nonprofit because the nonprofit is doing too many things. It, got, it wears too many hats. Okay. So okay. the nonprofit definitely have to have some insurance coverage just in case. Okay. Something happens. Okay. But people try to, you know, I'll, I'll pay for this when I need it. Mm-hmm. Like, don't do that. <laughs> so you teach those courses right in right in your business. Right. Though. Okay. Right. Then we have a real estate class because mm-hmm. a lot of people um, are interested. Like, everybody should be interested in real estate mm-hmm. because real estate can slingshot you into greener pastures. Okay. So we kind of, like, teach that part. And then we got the CPR training. We getting ready to have phlebotomy training, STNA okay. training. Okay. We're getting ready to have insurance agent training. Um, so everybody now is picking up their role. Like, you already do this. Why don't you just start a class? Right. Yeah. So now I get I get calls. Like, when I say every day, we have funding. Do you have anybody got this program? We got mm-hmm. funding. Do you have anybody got this program? So that's why I started the association that mm-hmm. you're in. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. now I'm, I'm giving it to y'all. Like, here, here's the money. Y'all figure mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. Here's the contact people. Here's this and that. Because... When I would get it, you know, it would be so much information I'll forget. Like okay. I can't remember who did what, and it's somebody that gave me this, but I don't know who I was talking to. Because mm-hmm. I'd be, you know, once I talk to somebody, oh, that's a good idea, and the next thing somebody else would get my attention. Right. I'm like, well, let me put this over here. What you guys say? Right. And I'll forget. So now I can just give it to the association. Like here, these people got funding. These people got funding. This one. Start this business, start that business. So this is so association, it's a membership, which means right. well, everybody's helping everybody. Everybody's in the helping everybody. Right. So as we go, we picking each other up as we yeah. move higher and right. higher. Right, right. Well, and that's then, awesome. And ain't nobody got to depend on yeah. little old me. Yeah. They calling each other. Yeah. So we're gonna have a uh, a roster. Okay. That's gonna be online mm-hmm. on the on the website, and they go in with their little code, mm-hmm. and they can put their own business information in of who to call for, mm-hmm. like contracting and attorneys and group homes and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. So you have group homes as well. Group home training is on every Saturday, one well, every other Saturday. So how did you come up with the different um, programs? How did that happen? I know. I'm. I don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> um. I got the business part, like the nonprofit and the for profit, and then mm-hmm. I said, "Well, it makes sense to have real estate because real estate makes millionaires, right?" Mm-hmm. So in the real estate, 
um, got when we first started, we got like different entrepreneurs come and give their talent to teach to real estate. But then it was a way that you know the well, how the real estate was going is like everybody was to themselves, like they okay. were selfish, okay, and they wasn't helping nobody. So I kind of de- you know dismantled it and brought it back up. Okay, it has to go in line with what we're teaching about business. Okay, so the business piece and the real estate piece has to go together. And then the insurance. Okay. So then that way you're understanding all these three pieces on your chessboard, and then you're moving your chess pieces accordingly. So you basically just restructured the whole thing, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you have, like, different teachers come in for the real estate class? Yes. How does that work? Um, Vernon Tyus, he's now in charge of the uh, real estate program. Mm-hmm. And he, um, how he teaches it is, is, is amazing because – he only he teaches it how you should purchase real estate or mm-hmm. get it donated, and mm-hmm. then he takes it a step further and show you how charitable gifting works inside real estate and insurance. Oh wow! Yep. So you said donated, so you can actually get real estate donated. And actually, you can get real estate donated. Yes. Oh wow! Could you yeah. tell us about that? It's it's so much. I don't even know where to begin. Begin. <laughs> begin. Um, what do I have to do? I have to be a nonprofit organization, you, or you um. It will be better if you were, but you don't have to be a nonprofit to get real estate donated. Okay. Um, when I first started the real estate class, I had a lady. She um, wanted to know how to get um, houses. Okay. She was trying to start a transitional um, housing for teens that were transitioning out of foster care. Okay. So I said, well, what you can do is go on to the website, the county docket, the county website, mm-hmm. auditor's website, and get a list of, you know, drive around first, get some addresses, and look them up on the um, auditor's list. Mm-hmm. And then she said, well, I'm scared to talk to people. Mm-hmm. And I said, like, well, give me, the, give me the name and the number. I'll call them for you, and you listen and record what I'm saying to them. So she did that all summer. She started the class in mm-hmm. September, and what ha- had happened was she got a guy to give her 10 properties at once. 10? Ten. Ten. He was in tax trouble. And he donated it to her, or gave you just gave them to her. Like here, here you go. Wow! And she didn't have her nonprofit up and running at the time, so they was all in her name. So she was like, "What would I do now?" I said, "Well, transfer them into your nonprofit to stop stop the taxes okay. from occur- occurring. So whatever past taxes he has, you pay those, and then ongoing, there's nothing." No taxes no more until you pay those taxes off. So you pretty much consult your students as well as yeah. they go out into the business. Yeah, a lot of cons- a lot of consulting, <laughs> lots. So I had a um, a consulting um, meeting this morning mm-hmm. before they went out of town. They were getting ready to go out of town to um, Vegas and take a, a, a they were getting ready to travel from state to state. Okay, but they are they um the, they just pay for their association fee today this morning. So they're going to be a part of the association as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a lot of people is, um, want to be a part of the association. And you don't have to be a member to be a part of the association. You just have to be a part and give, give okay. back into the association. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a major part mm-hmm. right there, giving. Yeah. It's like helping the communities, giving. Right. Well, okay. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. welcome. Thank you for being a a guest (laughs) on Women of Wisdom. Let's talk. All right. And just to let everybody else know, I'm a graduate of a blot. Woman of Wisdom was birthed through blot, a nonprofit agency, 501c3. Um, So thank you. I thank you for myself. Okay. You are such a blessing for the community. Thank you. As well as us, the students. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, (laughs) y'all.